Excellent. So what was the most difficult thing about choosing your capstone project topic? I gotta say it wasn't difficult to choose because the goal was to pick something that you felt connected to, and I felt connected to it, so it was easy to choose. Did that make it easier to do research? Yeah, because I wanted to know more about it. So what would you suggest for students that are going to college, because you've been working basically on a college project this whole year. What would you suggest to them? What kind of information could you give them to help them be successful? Like, even if it's something you don't care about, like at all, and you got to do a project over it, look through your whole topic and find something you do care about. And that'll make you want to learn more about it. And if you can do that, it'll, it'll be better quality. Because if you care about it, you're going to work harder for it. Do you guys have any questions that you can think of? Okay, go ahead. So can you talk a little bit about how volunteering and giving service to your community has done for you or helped you or made you think about things in a different way personally? Yeah. Volunteering and service to my community, like, when I do that, because I volunteer a lot, especially at that place, when I do that, it helps me see that I'm fortunate because a lot of times you look at people and you think, like, oh, they got it all, or I don't have nothing because they got a lot. It's just, you see that not everybody is equal with you. Like, they're all equal people, but they're not, they don't have the same things as you. Even though you feel like they have more, like you realize that they hurt in some different way. That makes sense. And so it just helps you. See outwardly is not necessarily what's going on inside. Inside. It helps keep you humble as a person. So what would you say about society as a whole with technology, sense of entitlement, and the way education is going, <clears throat> and what you got out of this project in that regard? Well, that's two questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, education as a whole with technology. Pros and cons. Pros, it helps you learn faster. You can connect with people all across the world. You got knowledge, like, at your fingertips. Like, you see that computer in your hand? That's, that's knowledge right there. Your phone, knowledge. Like, Everything you've got can teach you something. Cons, it's a distraction. <laughs> because when somebody is trying to teach you, like not on technology, you lose focus, lose sight of what you should be learning because you're trying to have fun or stay in touch with your bestie that you don't see in like 20 minutes. So I'm just saying, it's my pros and cons. Okay, and then sense of entitlement? Sense of entitlement. That is when you feel like you should just have something, like, oh, I'm old this. Even though I didn't work for it, I'm old this. And a lot of times, us in school, we feel like certain things should just be given to us, even though we don't work that hard for it. And doing this, I noticed, like, Americans, minorities, especially, like, a lot of times we have the most blood-related issues. Like, I'm pretty sure a disease y'all know very well is, like, sickle cell. It, it's very popular in African Americans, and you need a lot of blood products for it. But yet, our people don't go out and donate. But they they like, oh, I need help now, I need help now. That's a sense of entitlement, because you feel like, even though you didn't do nothing, you should just receive something. And I'm not saying it's the sickle cell was your fault, but you could go out, tell people, help people. Let's say a friend got it. And you're like, oh, I need my friend some help, but you don't want to do nothing about it. Why? Why do you deserve it? Why should you get it? That's a sense of entitlement. Did y'all think of any questions you'd like to ask him about the project or about the experience? No? You know what I mean? Oh, go ahead. Where's the funding come for that, like, that global blood um, drive? The global blood fund? Fund, thank you. It's a lot of, it's, a bunch of different blood centers in America, like the American Red Cross, Oklahoma Blood Institute, like the Kentucky <coughs> Blood Foundation, all of them come together to give to those third world countries that need it. They all come together. That's where they get their funding from. They are donate. There, are there the travel opportunities with that? Or? If you work for the blood fund itself, 
and if you like really hired high up in the company. But there are some travel opportunities. It just depends on what you're doing. So, what have you learned from? I know that you're, you're really into it, so you had some working out. So tell me something that you've learned now that you've finished that you didn't know before. This, what I thought was kind of weird because I didn't think there could be a, such a thing. Y'all know most of the regular blood types, right? A, A, B, O. There's actually two more blood types. Yeah. <laughs> and I did not know that. And they are actually native to Africans. And it's really weird because, you know, let's say somebody with A negative blood needs blood and we have a blood shortage. It's gonna be hard to get blood for them. But somebody with one of those undefined blood types, if we have a shortage for them, then like it's nothing you can do because it's so few people that actually have that blood type that it makes it rare in occurrence because like O positive won't help them. O negative runs out too fast. And the AB, ABs and the A's and the B's, they, they do nothing for it. Wow. So I, I learned that and I thought that was pretty amazing. So knowing the numbers of people in Africa, that's, that's a large yeah. Oh, and one more thing too about uh, so the only, the only you didn't just do this presentation right here, but what else was in, involved in your capstone project? What other kinds of things did you learn how to do or write? <sighs> yeah, I have to write that paper. <laughs> Explain. Well, this was just a quick way to show y'all my year, but in that paper it gives you background what capstone is because when I first started I did not know what capstone was I had no idea like that whole first paragraph is just telling you what capstone was it just brain part question again please uh, what all is involved in doing a project like this that they might anticipate in the very near future actually because it portfolios and things are going to be start to be required for graduation lots of research because you can't talk about something if you don't know what you're talking about. You gotta incorporate it into your daily life. You gotta just, because if you got a project this big, then you just gotta know what you're talking about. You gotta look back at it every day. You gotta make sure that you fully understand what you're talking about. You can't go in and just be like, oh, I just copy and pasted a bunch of stuff and now I'm about to go talk about it. That ain't gonna work. You don't get an F. And then the writing abilities, would you say your writing abilities have improved or not improved over the year? I think it has improved because if i got to write one more paper, I'm going to go jump off the bridge. Um, <laughs> because you have to write so much because this project is very reflective, so you have to always go back on what you did. you got to write about it. you got to make sure you remember it because even though you feel like what I'm doing right now has nothing to do with anything, if you go back, you reflect on it, you break it down, you, f you take something out of everything. So whether it's uh, something good or something bad, you take something from it. And that's going to either help you or hurt you in your project. So everything you do is going to be a reflective experience. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, no. Thank you all for listening.